The back pressure is one of the most misunderstood concepts in exhaust theory. People often talk about this without any real solid knowledge. There are lots of misconceptions floating around about back pressure. So let's see what are the facts regarding the concept of back pressure. First of all, how can we define the back pressure? Any fluid flowing through a pipe will experience a drag on the walls of the pipe. And this depends on a number of factors. The diameter of the pipe, the smoothness of the inside of the pipe, the viscosity of the fluid and finally the velocity of the fluid. This drag results in a pressure drop through the pipe. In order for the fluid to flow at all, the pressure on the one end of the pipe must be higher than the other one. In an exhaust system, that pressure drop is what we refer to as back pressure. One of the biggest myths that people have about back pressure is opting for a larger diameter pipe will eliminate back pressure considerably and bring significant rise in power. That's not completely true. Suppose your car have an exhaust system with 2 inch diameter and you swap out for a 4.5 inch to eliminate the back pressure and thereby achieving better performance from your engine. But the result will definitely be disappointing. The one thing that you will notice immediately is the considerable loss in power. And you might ask why. The flow of exhaust gas is not a continuous stream, instead it flows in the form of pulse. Every time a pulse of exhaust gas runs through the pipe, strange thing happens. It has a little area of vacuum behind it. This reduces the flow resistance drastically for the following pulse. To make things clear, take a look at the NASCAR racing. Just like a NASCAR stalker running around the track, the pulse generates a little bit of vacuum behind it. In NASCAR, a driver can take advantage of another driver's vacuum by getting right behind it and driving in it. The wind resistance is drastically reduced. In NASCAR, it's called drafting. In exhaust theory, it's called scavenging. To get the maximum scavenging effect with a higher gas velocity, the diameter of the pipe needs to be small. By maximizing the scavenging effect, the pulses can be pulled out of the combustion chamber much more efficiently, which means the engine doesn't have to work as hard to do that. But that will only be effective at lower RPMs, where there's a bunch of time between the pulses. As the RPM rise, the pulse flow becomes more and more like constant flow, and the scavenging effect will start to decline, increasing the back pressure. At higher RPMs, a large flow area is needed for the faster escaping of exhaust gas, means a larger diameter pipe is needed. But it will be expensive and complicated to use two different pipes with different diameter for the same application. Therefore, the sensible solution will be to use a properly tuned exhaust for your application. For a race car, large diameter pipe will be adequate since the engine spends most of its time near the red line. When it comes to street application, you just can use a wide straight pipe. That should be optimized not only for performance, but also for efficiency. While designing an exhaust for a street car, there are lots of factors that need to be considered. Most of the OEM exhaust system will have to deal with environmental pollution, noise pollution, safety, etc. And because of that, those will have a higher back pressure rate than any other race exhaust or aftermarket exhaust system. These exhaust systems generally have smaller diameter in order to increase the scavenging effect and thereby improving torque at low and mid-range RPM, since that's where a street engine spends most of its time. So it is safe to say that the back pressure won't do any good to the performance of your engine. It is also important to mention the significance of velocity and its effect on performance whenever you are talking about back pressure.